All right, I think this is going. How's everybody doing? So I'm back yet again. Was this like the second week in a row? I think I look pretty good. I look all right. I look like crap. It is like it's 8:30 in the morning on a Saturday. I just woke up. I seriously just woke up. And um, sorry, you're gonna hear some movement in the microphone there. Just checking levels, just making sure everything looks okay. Uh, it looks fine to me. But yeah, I just woke up and. Um, I was I've been trying to I've been trying to get this video together because I've been wanting to make this video because man this past week uh, the information has been a flowing look at this this is my uh, this is my Voltron this is from this loot crate uh, it's just a thing I don't know I, I don't know why I showed that to you I just saw it and I was like hey yeah, it's Voltron but uh, that's actually very fitting believe it or not Voltron uh, gigantic robots. Um, we're not talking about gigantic robots. It actually leads more towards uh, something like Pacific Rim um, or uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers where they would have to go out and fight giant monsters. Um, and that's what has been happening over the past week for me has been giants. Not just giant monsters, but giants, period. Um... I've learned some interesting things, and it all ties together uh, in one thing or another. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, this isn't... I've been kind of doing this uh, just on a whim, just talking about this stuff, because uh, for the past year, I have been coming to God, and um, he has been showing me many, many things uh, over the past year. I've asked him to show me all the things I can I can take, and I feel like Enoch sometimes, where it's just overwhelming. But uh, he's he shows me something new every day, and this this last week he's shown me a lot. And because I came, <clears throat> because I came to our Lord and Heavenly Father uh, through reason and logic, and not through a church and not through religion. I honestly think that if I can spread this to other people in the way that I was brought into it, maybe it might help. You never know. I mean, you don't have to believe it. You don't, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to absolutely convert anybody. Um, if anything, I'm trying to open people's eyes. Uh, that's what I've been pretty much doing since I found out that, you know, um, the old 9-11 attacks were, were, not what we thought they were. Let's put it that way. I, I'm sitting there trying to avoid it, and I don't know why, because it's like, you know, that if you say certain things, they'll put that little uh, Wikipedia thing on the bottom. It's like, really? I don't care. It doesn't matter. As if... <clears throat> so anyways, what's what's YouTube going to do? Demonetize somebody that can't make any money on YouTube anyways? It's, it, and it doesn't matter at this point. Honestly, I don't really care. Um... But yeah, I, I figured this would be the way to do it, and it helps me talk about it, because I can't really talk about it, because when you, when you tell somebody that, oh, hey, you know, I believe that, you know, the earth might be flat, there might be gigantic trees in the world, and there were giants, people give you that look, like, eh, you know, what the hell are you talking about? So I'm, I'm putting it into a, uh, I'm putting into how I know best is just is to talk about it and just try to reason it out in my own head because logically it just makes no sense it really doesn't it just it makes no sense i uh i was I was talking to my girlfriend yesterday and I said, you know the stuff I'm on now it's like if you had uh there's a perfect example right here I was even thinking about this in a car too so I'm a musician, so I have drumsticks. I'm not a drummer, but I have drumsticks. You're a musician, you have drumsticks. So I was thinking, if this is a line of people's awakening, like, you know, how you, how people open their eyes, I'm going to put it over here. There you go. Cause if I, uh, that's weird. So if, if this is a line of how people open their eyes, you know, I mean, you start with a small stuff. You know, you've got, like, aliens in Roswell that might be here, and you've got, like, maybe JFK here. And then you start moving up the line to, like, you know, 9-11 here and, you know, maybe the government screwing us all over here and something else is in there. So then you start getting into the crazy stuff, like Flat Earth might be here. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you, I've, I don't really 
subscribe to it myself, but like Electric Universe stuff might be here, you know, and, and crazy stuff like that, and mud floods, which I'm still looking into. I, I've I've kind of veered off of all that stuff, but yeah, that stuff might be here. So in in that kind of perspective of the the line of conspiracies, I'm like way out here, um, you know, where I am right now. I was, uh, it was like, I was listening to a guy, um, I cannot remember who it is now, um, I will probably remember as I go, but the, the guy I was listening to on YouTube about this, I, um, I was like, man, that stuff's out there, man, you know, that stuff is really, really out there, but then I was like, you know what, where else am I going to go? At this point, I mean, shit, come on, man. We might as well go there. Hell. So I went there, and sure enough, just about everything he was talking about, I was able to look up in books, uh, mostly the Bible, mostly other things, too. I do have reference material here. But uh, I, I was able to look it up and put the pieces together for myself, and holy crap. <laughs> it's just... Uh, and I know I talked in the last video, by the way, if you made it through even half of that last video, good on you, man, because that was two hours of just me rambling. <laughs> it really was. But um, I, I've been able to piece it together. And whenever you get that, whenever you get that to where it's like, there it is, you know, you're like, come on, something in the back of your head flips and you're just like, oh, thank you, Lord, for showing me that. So. <sighs> That's all I've had. I've had like epiphanies for the entire week because trying to figure it out and try to put it all together. And there's things that I've been able to put together that other people haven't been able to put together. I don't know why they haven't seen it. Um, so maybe this is new information. Maybe it's not. I can tell you this right now. A lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about is not new information. People have been talking about this stuff for years. I'm just now figuring it out. So I'm going to be passing that knowledge on to you guys and... Seeing what you can make of it. So again, this is this is not me trying to uh, this is not me trying to push anything on anybody. Uh, you can take it as you will. As soon as you get tired of listening to me babble about stupid stuff, you can go away. I'm not going to try to force anything down your throat. Uh, if you feel the need that you need to go find something and correct me on it, please feel free because I am infallible. I know that that last video, I I said some things that later on after it was done, I was like, oh, yeah, man, that, that was wrong. And I understand that because I'm going off the cuff here. I, I am literally just going off the cuff. I, I am talking what's in my mind. It's a stream of consciousness kind of thing. I do have notes. Um, so we're going to kind of go over the notes. This is stuff I like, I'm sitting there at work, I'm data entry. So I'm sitting there at work and it's like, every time I see, I hear something, I'm like, you know, trying to write it down and try to get it in there. But I do have notes. I have reference material here. Um, this is Bible. This is the Bible that I was given to by my good friend, Patrick way back in 94. I think it was 95. I've got this. I've got this. This is the Book of Enoch. Let's see if I can get it in there. There you go. This is something that I ordered on Amazon last week. It's not bad. It's a complete edition. It's got all three books. Um, I'm not even done yet. This is where I am right now. Third Book of Enoch is very strange. Uh, it's where he's he's up talking to the angels in the heavens. and it's It's out there. I'm telling you that much right now. It's definitely out there, but the first book of Enoch, first and second book of Enoch, do have a lot of interesting things in them. Some people don't like to put this with the Bible, and hey, that's cool. You know, that's fine. I'm not, um, I'm not saying that these are things that should be taken literally. Um, even though, uh, based upon the information that I've been getting, you know, uh, not only through the Bible, not only through this, not only through things I find on the internet and not only through, you know, what we have done in the past, uh, finding giants, uh, finding giant bones, things like that. I'm starting to take it literally. I mean, it's, it's stuff that, that I'm, I'm like, you know what? Our world was not the way it was. It really, it, it is nothing like we thought it was. And it is crazy. But other than that, I just got this. I wish I could use this, but I just got this yesterday. Right there it is. Um, 
I got this through Amazon yesterday, and I just read the introduction yesterday, and boy, howdy. <laughs> I was flipping through it and found some interesting things, too. I was like, you got to be shitting me. So this is this is really cool. Um, Book of Giants was a... Uh, it was a scroll that they found at a Dead Sea Scrolls. It's, it's very, very broken, uh, broken up. It's not the best. Um, but this guy put put it together with the Book of Enoch to kind of make it flow and make sense. So it's it's not bad. And he's got little passages from uh, from the Bible in here. He's got passages from Jasher in here, and he's got some other little things. You know, he makes some notes and stuff like that. And it's like, you know what? That's this is going to be pretty cool, you know. This is going to be pretty cool. So I, I'm, I can't wait to read this. This is this is going to be a big one for me. But we can't use this because I have not read it. There's a couple of things that I might be able to use from it, but I don't know. We'll have to see. Other than that, the only other information I have, I got some websites here ready to go, and I got what's in my head. It's, and that's not really the best, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um. The one thing I do is I do not uh, put up pretty little pictures. I do not flash websites for you to read along with me and all that stuff. I think that you give it far more power if you hear a thing and need to either prove it or deny it. If you go out and watch it, your, or go out and look it up yourself. Um, there's something in having somebody show you something and and him tell you the information, and that's fine. There's another thing entirely for somebody to tell you something and you say, wait a minute, that's not right, and you have to go out and prove it for yourself. Uh, I've always been that kind of kid. Uh, I've always said, you know, if you tell me something and if I don't think it's right, I have to go out and look it up. So you're not going to get any pretty pictures. If you came here for pretty pictures, I'm sorry, that's not what you're going to get. But you're going to get some some fat dude in a, in a basement uh, in Indiana. We just got four inches of snow, by the way. But uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get some guy sitting on a laptop speaking his mind about stuff that he's been kind of looking at for the past week. And and again, if you don't want to hear it, don't. You know, if you feel like you need to prove me wrong, then hey, you know, go for it. If you feel like I'm crazy, then fine, I'm crazy. But you know, whatever. Just <laughs> take take it as it is. Again, I, I don't have an agenda here. Um, other than, you know, just trying to share this information because this information is not being shared and I would really love for everybody to kind of know this. So how do I do this? <laughs> I've been thinking about the best way to do this, um, for the past couple of days and I really just don't know the best way to do it. So I'm going to give it to you straight from the book. Um, the, the word it say? Uh, Genesis 6 uh, when man began to multiply on the face of the ground and daughters were born to them the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair and they took to wife such as them as they chose then the Lord said my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh but his days shall be a hundred and twenty years the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. These were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. So, something happened in Genesis uh, towards the towards the days of Noah, where the angels came down and decided to take the take the daughters of man and make make children now in the film i don't really have it pulled up here the film can be taken as either the sons of the fallen ones it can be taken as you know giants so there's there's like five or six different names for all of it and um Sorry about that. That was uh, that was a, a little thing. <laughs> Angie opened the door on me. So, anyways, but that was there's a whole bunch of different names for them. Um, Nephilim, Rephaim is another one. I can't remember exactly what that means. I have it written down. I think. Um, 
No, I don't have it written down. But there, there's a whole bunch of different names in an IM, and they all have to do with you know Fallen Angels and that whole deal. So, for our purposes, whenever they talk about uh, the Nephilim, we're talking about the sons of, or well, the children of the uh, the Fallen Angels. Uh, there's there were women, female giants as well, uh, from what I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I've heard. Uh, again, I'm going to have to stop. Hold on a second. Unbelievable. It's like everything is everything is trying to trying to get me here all at once. Uh, again, I just woke up. My nose is, is running right now, so it's it's not like it's you know I'm not doing too well. To be honest with you, <laughs> I probably should have saved this for later, but I wanted to get this off my chest. And so, anyways, there were giants in the world. Um, it's not just there. There's other places in the Bible. Hopefully, this doesn't screw up everything that uh, I'm doing because I'm looking at websites. I've had that screw everything up before. Uh, where does it say? Looking through my notes right now. And I know it's just, it sounds ridiculous for me to to kind of do it this way. But I know I have it in here somewhere. I just don't remember where it went. Again, I'm not I'm not uh I'm not prepared in the best way ever because again I just kinda I'm kind of throwing all this together, you know, just to kind of, kind of go through it. But some somewhere along the line, according to uh, according to a certain text, There were giants. I mean, it, it was like the entire, what was it? The seed of man. It's like all seed of man was corrupted. Let me find that. And again, I'm actually looking it up in the book. Because if I just look on a website, it's like, you know, it's a website. But if you look it up, it's like it's there, you know. There's power in this. Uh... Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way upon earth. Now there's a lot of people that want to say, you know, well, all flesh being corrupt means that everybody was doing wrong and everybody was being jerks and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I have I have thought, well, you know, if you've got these fallen angels that are coming down and, and mating with women... What if they're ruining the seed? Now, I, I talked about this in the last one. If you didn't see it, um, I talked about how almost everything from Adam and Eve to Jesus seems like the like God is trying to preserve that bloodline. Now, if if you've got you know fallen angels that are coming down mating with mating with women, creating these giants, you're corrupting the line. Uh, not only that. But I have heard somewhere, and I, I didn't write it down, unfortunately, but uh, it was just kind of in a passing kind of thing that um, they were talking about the uh, the sons of God were coming down and mating with animals as well. And I was like, oh, that would that would explain these crazy wild creatures that we hear about, you know, these, these chimera that are these mixtures of animals, you know, all this stuff. And, and I, I had even said in the last, uh, the last episode that, you know, these, they had the knowledge of the fallen angels. They, they were able to, you know, make all these beautiful or make all these crazy ornate buildings and all this stuff, and they were able to do all this. Why wouldn't they have the the ability to to have to manipulate genetics? You know, I mean, it's entirely possible. But at the same time, if they were if they were breeding with animals, that would make sense too. 
it doesn't have to go either way. You know, I, when you put it together in your head, there's going to be something that clicks. In the end, you're 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 trying to figure it all out because it all doesn't make sense. And and when you read through this, I found that that as you read through Genesis, they there's a lot of things that they just kind of it's it's kind of blip. You know, it's just kind of like you know yada 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 this and then this, and it's like wait a minute, what happened between here and here? You know, there's this whole section where it's like, and it, and it seems like there's a couple places where it skips and it's like, there it feels like there should be more in there and they don't tell you this stuff. And I've always thought that. I, I've I've been kind of reading the Bible up and down um, since I was like 12 or 13. You know, uh, it, even back whenever I was, even back whenever I was almost a practicing Satanist, I was I was reading through. I, I used to find all the passages and all the stuff that would help me discredit Christianity because I was that kind of asshole, you know. And um, it, it's like because I knew those going back into it, you know, understanding and believing now, it it was like having knowing those. I'm like, oh. I get it now. I get why this is this. I get why that's that. You know, it had to take me that, like I said, that logic and reason to be able to crack into it. But that's why things like the Book of Enoch and stuff like that, whenever you kind of put them together, it kind of makes sense. You know, it kind of goes through and and, uh, makes sense in a weird way. Let me see if I can find this. This is in Book of Enoch, Chapter 7. Uh... And he's talking about the fallen angels, and all the others together with them took unto them wives, and each chose himself one, and then they began to go in unto them and defile themselves with them. They taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant, the women became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was 3,000 L's. An L? What is an L? I remember right. An L. Oh, I'll get that out of the way. How long is an L? An L. There we go. Jeez. I know I should have had one of these already up. So this is one L. This says one L is 1.25 yards. Now, of course, that's just coming straight up. But I know if you go down... Uh, it says that other people measured an L. It's almost the same as it's almost the same as a cubit. So if you didn't know, a cubit is the measurement from the tip of your finger down to your elbow. So it's about 18 inches, give or take, I would say. So 3,000 L's. Let's just go by a cubit. Let's let's not even go by yards. Let's just go by cubits. 3,000 times 18, that is 54,000 inches. Let's divide that by 12. It's about 4,500 4, feet. <laughs> how, many, how many feet are in a mile? <laughs> I think it's like, was it like 6,000 feet in a mile? I, don't, I never remember. So we'll look that up. Five thousand. So these guys were pretty close. Oh man, these guys were pretty close to a. These guys were pretty close to a mile high. That's in this book. Now again, you don't have to believe that. You don't. I don't. I. I've said it before. You don't have to believe all this stuff to uh, accept, accept Jesus Christ. You know. I mean, you really don't. But this kind of puts things into perspective of just what the hell was going on. You know, it really does. And again, a lot of people don't don't buy this. They don't they look at this and they say, well, this isn't, you know, it, it goes against everything that we've been taught. You know, up until what they say up until about 500 years ago that, that this used to be in the Bible, though, this used to be a part of the story. But then they took it out. And I can understand why now, because. When you when you start putting into into that kind of perspective of oh there were giants in the world you know and and we are finding giant bones and you we are starting to see all these uh, 
all these newspaper clippings about them finding, you know, people that were 10, 15 feet tall uh, in the late 1800s. And then, you know, they've done their best to, to hide all this stuff from us. It takes away that supernatural. It takes away the supernatural from our lives because there is a very, very large supernatural part of this world that we don't know, we don't understand. And this puts that back into perspective. Now, again, going into this thinking, you know, these guys were almost a mile high, it's like, wow. That's not big. That's big. That's out there. Again, you know, the the thing with this drumstick and I'm way out here. That's that's where I am. I'm way out here. So it it puts it in perspective, you know. It really it really does put this whole thing into perspective like, wow. I mean, this is this isn't just, you know, we're talking about guys that are 10-15 feet high. We're talking about guys that are a mile high. I've heard bigger than that. So there was something really crazy happening back then. There absolutely was. And let me see here. Yeah, I'm going to keep going from this. Uh, who consumed all the acquisitions of men, and when the men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. So basically, these giants were born. They're a mile high. They eat everything. And whenever whenever they can't find anything else to eat, whenever man can't sustain them anymore, they start eating men. Now think about that for a second. That would be a reason for, for God to say, okay, look, we got to restart this because this isn't working. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to, to devour each other's flesh and to drink the blood and the earth laid acquisition against the accusation, sorry, against the lawless ones. They began to sin against birds, beasts, and reptiles, and fish. So the giants themselves were probably having intimate relations with animals as well. Now, you also have to remember, I talked about this a little bit in the, in, uh, the last time I was talking about how there were probably humongous trees. The animals were probably five times bigger than they are now. Well, some what was it, 20% bigger? I think it's what it was. It was what we were, we were kind of saying, because they're talking about finding fossils of of dragonflies. Dragonflies are about that big, but they're talking about finding dragonflies with a, you know, I don't remember what it was, five foot wingspan. So you know, you can multiply that up. Um, we're talking about gigantic tree stumps, trees that are about a mile and a half, maybe two miles high. And if you got a mile high dude chopping down a tree, that makes sense. You know, it really does. It puts it in perspective. Now again, it doesn't have to be real. It doesn't have to be like that. It could this could all be just some fantasy tale. It, it really could. But um if you absolutely one hundred percent believe that this is real, then it doesn't hurt to fill in the blanks. I mean, it, you can believe it. Again, you can believe this from front to back. You don't have to believe anything. You know, you can you can go through it and, and be like, okay, you know, there, there was problems going on, all that stuff, but there are other books that were found with the Old Testament that fill in those blanks, and man, they are crazy. Absolutely crazy. And not only that, but you hear about the... Uh, you hear about so many other cultures in the world that that are talking about titans and giants. Um, we, I just heard about uh, the Mayans had a legend about the giants that would come and help them build the pyramids. I've heard about the Egyptians have tales about giants. Uh, I've heard the Chinese have a legend about giant men. Um, there was something that, that I kind of got on to about this guy was talking about being out in the desert of Arizona, uh, was up camping, doing something, and uh, he was accosted by these 15-foot-high dudes. They came out, and, and they were running around him in circles, making fun of him, spitting on him, doing other stuff. I don't know exactly all it was, 
and uh, you know he <laughs> he said he was lucky to be alive. Now I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, you know, it's it is what it is. You take it how you take it. You know, you 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 chew the. You chew the meat and you spit out the fat. That's that's pretty much the uh, the way that I've heard it. You know, you you take what you need to take out of it, and the rest of it you can just kind of wash it off. So, anyways, so that's kind of setting the stage here. Um, let's see what else is in here. They've gone out, gone to the daughters of the men, and they have defied themselves, and the women bore giants. The whole earth was thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. Now, there's a lot of talk about this, about them eating each other, and about this, you know, this blood and unrighteousness going on. Uh, and it's this is the same thing. And there, there's several different places in here where it says uh, the evil spirits of the giants. Yeah. Yeah, that's all stuff. This is all—it's all pretty much the same thing. I—I I did several different places where I just kind of—I highlighted it where it said, you know, this is this is where all this stuff was. There's a place actually back here. This is the book of the secrets of Enoch. This is uh, this is the last one. This is the middle one. This is the middle one. They—they they call this Enoch two. And the reason that these things were so big, I find this interesting because it's right in here. Uh. This is about Enoch waking up. Uh, he was he was in his bed, and he was woke up by these two beings. And there appeared to me two men, exceedingly big, so that I never saw such on earth. Uh, and their faces were shining like the sun, their eyes were too wide, burning light. And it goes on to describe, these are two angels that came down to pick him up. Now, the angels themselves are exceedingly big. That makes you, makes you think. The angels themselves are big. So, of course, any offspring they would have would be huge as well. So that, that kind of puts that into perspective of, of where this is going. So, I don't have it with me. I don't think I have it with me. It could be in the... I don't think it was in the Book of Og, and I don't think it was in... Uh, it might be in the Book of Giants. I don't know. But somebody was talking about how the... Uh, the giants, one thing the giants used to do, I have it written down here, one thing the giants used to do, because they thought it gave them great power, was that they used to eat the testicles of each other. They used to eat each other. That's the way it is. That's that's what that whole thing was. They used to devour each other's flesh and drink each other's blood. That's been like the, uh, that was like the, the main running thing in, in the uh, the old, you know, in Genesis was, you know, in defiling the flesh. I even have that written down too, uh, you know, with question marks around it. Defiling the flesh could mean eating of the flesh. Cannibalism. What do you think? That, doesn't that kind of make sense? So that's that's extremely possible. I mean, that's that's a thing that these giants, you know, they, they thought they could absorb the power Highlander style of of other giants by eating the testicles of each other. So of course they start doing that, and it leads to some great war. Now this is where it starts to get get kind of off the cuff here. So there's a couple different stories that I heard that I don't have, and I don't know where to look them up. Uh, I I tried, I couldn't find them. People are finding them, I can't find them. Uh, there was something called a one one hundred thousand giant war. Um, it's supposedly, I have it written down under the Book of Og. Now, let me tell you something about the Book of Og. I, I listened to a guy talk from the Book of Og, and there was another one, um, I think it was from the 100,000 Giant War. And it is the most heretical story I've heard in my life. It was... Just, just big chunks of it that were ripped straight from the Bible. Uh, it was written, what does it say? I, I have it written down too. It was written by the Vatican, which the Book of Og released by the Vatican. And it was like, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know how much you could take from that because, I mean, it, again, it there, there was a part in it where it was talking about a giant that told his armor bearer 
to kill him lest these uncircumcised giants wait what uncircumcised giants lest they come and, and defile his body and all this kind of stuff and I'm like well wait a minute that's that's that one part from um oh for fuck's sake is it is it numbers it's something else somewhere else that it was that one of the guys was on the battlefield and, and he pretty much the same way as a giant it's almost word for word where he he falls on a sword and kills himself and them that automatically just kind of wrote that entire book out for me but there's a little truth in each lie and that's that's what i wrote down here there's a truth in every lie so you can't really use it as like a as like a perfect stepping stone but there's there's a little things in there that that sound interesting it it when you talk about these guys hurting each other and eating each other and that's where this comes from from the book of og where they're talking about eating the testicles of each other and then they're talking about in here where they're, they're eating the flesh of each other and drinking each other's blood you connect the pieces you connect those dots and it kind of it kind of works out so if i talk about the book of og i'm only taking little tiny things i'm not saying they're real but they fit into that kind of story so it could be a thing, could not be a thing. Again, you take the meat, spit out fat. It is what it is. So something was happening. <laughs> something very bad was happening. And God decided, you know what, we gotta we gotta get rid of this. We gotta we gotta fix this. So he decides to make the flood. So he tells Noah, you know, go make go make this Go make this ark. Go find all these animals, all this other kind of stuff. Save what you can, and then you will be able to come out on the other end of it because I have to wipe the slate clean. So that's so that's what he did. Now, there is a very big contention between some people that I heard that they were saying that they were saying that there were giants there were Nephilim before and after those days. And I don't know where that was. But they were talking about how they were... They were saying that there were giants before and after those days. And I don't even think it's in Genesis. I think it's in somewhere else. But that right there means that somewhere along the line... The giants had to survive the flood. Now, there's a lot of people that say, you know, well, maybe it was because, maybe it was because fallen angels. There was some more fallen angels that came down, and you know, they they kept breeding and all that kind of stuff. There's other people that say that there's a lot of a lot of uh, things went underground, and they're still hiding underground. That leads me to something that we're going to talk about at the end of this. Um, there was, there's a very fascinating story that we will get to that I love this story. I think his story is amazing. So, we're going to go Deuteronomy 3.11. Yeah, 3.11. Deuteronomy 3.11 says... For only Og, wait, wait, wait. Well, three ten says they're talking about the cities, all the cities of the tableland, and all Gilead and all Bashan. As far as wow, Salika and Edri, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og, the king of Bashan, was left of the remnants of the Rephaim. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. It is not in is it not in Reboth of the Ammonites? Nine cubits was its length, and four cubits its breadth, according to the common cubits. So Og was the last of the giants. Now see that's so weird. This is this is revised standard. Wow. I thought this was KGV. That's messed up. I've been reading like I I I thought for sure this was my KJV. No, this is revised standard. This is I haven't really been reading off of this too much. That's so crazy though, because 
I'm looking I'm looking at the KJV version right here. For only Og of Bashan remained of the remnant of giants. Wow, that's crazy. And here it actually says Raphaim. Now again, that makes sense that they would hide they would try to hide the word giants. Because if you start thinking that there's a supernatural force in the world, you're gonna start kind of putting two and two together. So what we have to do is we have to figure out, you know, what's this bed thing going on? So nine cubits. I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy calculator yet again. Because why not? Now you could probably already figure this out. Nine cubits times eighteen inches. It's one sixty two divided by that. That's thirteen and a half feet long. So let's just say this guy was about thirteen feet high, give or take. Thirteen feet, this thing was made of iron to hold his weight, I'm sure. But but now I can't prove this and I don't know how to prove this. But we're going to we're going to look this up. The word bedstead I heard from I heard from uh, the guy that I was listening to. He was saying that. The actual word, and I don't, I know, I don't know where to look this up. He said that the actual word for bedstead, when you translate it out, it could mean a couple things. I can't find it. Now, the one thing it could mean is literally just what it is: bed. You know, um, it could also mean the room of the bed. This is from the actual Hebrew word. Um, the translation. The th the other one that he said it could mean was baby bed. Now that that makes you wonder, because if we're just talking about a thirteen high thirteen foot high guy, eh, you know, there you go. It is what it is. It's a thirteen foot high guy. Uh, the Book of Enoch is a complete waste of time because they're talking about. Giants that are almost a mile high, yet the biggest giant that they're talking about is, is Og. He's only about 13 feet high. Ah, it's bullshit. It's nothing. But when you talk about a kid, when you talk about a guy's baby bed being 13 feet long, how tall is that dude gonna be? It makes you think. It really makes you think. So, if you think this guy was only 13 feet high, then hey. You can stop the video right now. You can go on with your life. Praise God. There you go. For all those that want to keep going down this, let's keep going. <laughs> because it just gets it gets crazier and crazier from here. I'm not going to lie. It just gets crazier and crazier from here. So, the... Uh, I'm going to look up Moses fighting... King Og. Because this gives you a little bit more of a detail about who this guy was. Deuteronomy 3. Oh, if we were right here. Where does it say? It's not even in here. Oh, no, there it is. So this is, is this Moses talking? I don't know who this is talking. Then we turned and went up to the way of Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us. He and all his people to battle at Ed Edri, I guess that's what it is. The Lord said, do not fear him, for I have given him and all his people in this land into your hand, and you shall do to him as you did to Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who dwell in Heshbon. So, what does all this stuff mean? Well, before Moses went down into... Before, before Moses went down into the land, he sent himself some... Uh, he sent some spies. He sent, what was it, 12 spies? 
Again, I'm only going by memory here. I'm looking up the actual passages as I go because I have to prove this to myself. And I'm looking it up on the on the because I have some of these pulled out. And again, I'm not I'm not going to show you these things. You have to find out for yourself. So numbers, what did I say it was? Numbers thirteen twenty four. Numbers, which is a very <laughs> I'm not going to say boring. It's just a very long, it's a very long book. Trying to get through numbers uh, was just, I'm not going to say it was pulling teeth, but it was pretty bad because it, it, a lot of it is just a, it is almost like somebody trying to calculate the people that were there. You know, it's, uh, it was rough. I get the hiccups now. All right. Numbers 13, 23 what this is. These are the these are the spies that he sent out. They came to the valley of Ishol and cut down from there a branch with a single cluster of grapes and they carried it on a pole between two of them. They brought also some pomegranates and figs. This place was called the Valley of Ishol because of the cluster where the men of Israel cut down from there. And that's pretty much exactly what it says in the KJV. Um, so put this into perspective that they cut down a branch of one cluster of grapes. Everybody know what one cluster of grapes is? It's about, it's about that big. About from there to there. But they had to carry it between two people on a staff. This wasn't just, this wasn't just a, just a single cluster of grapes. This thing was a big ass cluster of grapes. This is what I was saying before that this was this place was was pretty nice. It wasn't bad. God was God was sending the Israelites to the literal land of milk and honey where <laughs> where they could they could live uh they could live pretty nice for the rest of their lives. So everything in this valley was was big. That's where the giants lived because the giants needed to have all this food to be able to uh, to be able to uh, survive. So he sends these people down there. They pulled back these grapes, and of course, everybody's like, "Ooh, you know, look at this." But uh, whenever Moses asked this guy, um. Uh, but Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. So then the people who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. So they brought to the people of Israel an evil report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. It's a land where people eat people what it's saying and all the people that we saw in, in it are men of great stature and there we saw the Nephilim the sons of Anak who came who come from the Nephilim and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers so we seemed to them and of course King James is a little bit different but it basically says the same thing so these guys went and they said well it's a place and it's a place that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Now, it could very well mean that, oh, the deserts just swallow you alive. It could mean that. And they saw men there that were of great stature. Hey, you know, there's some guys there that are about 15 feet high. Sure, you know. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak. And this, like I said, it says the Nephilim. There you go. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sights as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sights. So, they said they appeared as if they were grasshoppers to these people. How tall do you have to be to see a human being about the size of a grasshopper? Mile? Give or take? Maybe less? Who knows? But they're not just talking about one or two. They're, or they're not just talking about one big guy. They're talking about the whole the whole land was filled with these things. So it makes you wonder. You know, I mean, it's like, how could a 15-foot tall dude, unless he's, is he standing on a mountain? Man, he could be standing on a mountain. You never know. I mean, you know, again, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to, you don't have to believe it. But 
when you put it into that perspective, when they're bringing back big, huge chunks of grapes that, that they need two guys to carry, when they're talking about guys that they look like grasshoppers to these people, when they're, they're talking about the land devouring them, which we already found in, uh, in Enoch. He's talking about that they would devour each other. Makes sense. Or that they would, they would devour man. It makes sense. You put it in perspective. So it's like, oh, wow. You know, just... Wow, okay, so how exactly big was this King Og? Now, this is going to take a second, because I don't have this one out. Uh, River of the Giants. See, this is not... I know I had it at one point in time about... Uh, Let's see, this is interesting. That's contemporary English version. So I'm looking at this right here. I, I came across the death of King of Bashan. Um, but the Lord said, Moses, don't be afraid of King Og. This is this is contemporary English version. And this says, King Og was the last of the Rephaim, and his coffin is in the town of Rabah in Amman. It is made of hard black rock and is 13 and a half feet long and 6 feet wide. I think that's them talking about the, uh, I think that's them talking about the, uh, bedstead. That's what I was saying. You have to, you have to kind of look between the lines on this kind of stuff. You really do. You have to, you have to kind of read, read it and then kind of make your own assumptions about it because, <sighs> I was thinking about it a little bit earlier, you know. God said that he would preserve the word, but he never said that man would preserve the word. You know, man has done its best to, to kind of make this, you know, <laughs> turn this into 20 million different things. So, you know, I mean, I would not doubt at all that there is something that we are missing somewhere. So we're going to look down here. Remains of Giants, behold, his bedstead was made. That's what that was. So what I need is whenever Moses... Whenever Moses killed King Og. Because that was the story that... That was the story that I need to see. I don't remember where it was. I don't remember where it was, and I didn't write it down either. My nose is getting stopped up again. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't have it written down. I had it, though, because we looked at it. Because I, I sat right there and looked at it. Okay, let's try this one. King Og. King Og of the Mountain. Actually, I shouldn't even I shouldn't even go go there just yet. Because we heard that or we even talked about how King Og had somewhere somehow survived the flood. Now it's interesting, there's a couple different uh couple different stories about this. We will get back to uh we'll get back to Moses and King Og here in a second. Because the the story that I'm looking up um, it actually helps helps us figure out just how big King Og was. So, the way that King Og survived the flood, it's really interesting. There's a couple different couple different things that I found. Um, in <laughs> on Wikipedia of all things, on Wikipedia of all things, uh, they talked about King Og. And, and King Og goes, he's in several different stories uh, across several different uh, several different uh, religions, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to have to blow my nose again. Hold on, guys. Jeez. Because apparently he's in the Talmud, he's in Islam, 
Um, he's in. Let's see here. And my eyes are watering too. Nice. I must look really good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, he's in Phoenician texts. I mean, he's in all kinds of texts, uh, you know, because there's, there's like every, just about every re religion has this flood story. And somehow every religion seems to have this story about this guy named Og, whether they, that's not Og. I said I was going to call him Og, because whenever you call him Og, you can see where the word ogre comes from. But they, you know, there's this guy called Ogius the Giant in the Book of the Giants. Uh, you know, there's a couple different places that they're talking about, you know, just different things. And it's like, wow, okay. You know, I mean, th this guy was actually something that was around that everybody was talking about. So where is it exactly? Dark barrels... See, bedstead could also be coffin. I mean, it's it's very possible that it could be coffin. Giant bedstead. No. I'm looking for it. It even said it, but I can't find it now. That it had said that... Oh, for crying out loud, I can't find it anymore. So anyways, it was saying that one of the ways that, that King Og had survived the flood was that he saw the Ark, and he jumped on top of the Ark. And that's how he survived. Uh, there's other things that I saw where they were talking about how... Um, they were talking about how this guy... Somehow, somehow Moses was feeding him as he went because, you know, Og couldn't eat. And it's like, okay, you know, that's that. I mean, that's that's a thing. It's whatever. Yeah, it is what it is. That's fine. But as I was kind of looking it up, I found this. It's on sacredtexts.com. <laughs> this is interesting. It's called The Giant of the Flood. Apparently, this is an old, uh, old Jewish, Jewish fairy tale. Jewish fairy tale called the Giant of the Flood. Um, I'm not going to read all this. I'm going to kind of go through it. But it says, Just before the world was drowned, all the animals gathered in front of the ark, and Father Noah carefully inspected them. So he's going through all this stuff, and he asks himself, I wonder, how shall I obtain, how I shall obtain a unicorn, and how I shall get it into the ark? Now, I did talk in the last video about how a unicorn is not a unicorn. It's not a, hor not, a, not a horse with a horn grown out the top of his head. More than likely, what they were talking about was a kind of rhinoceros that only has one horn on the front. Um, it starts with a C. I can't remember what it is. I'm going to do that right now. We're going to go Webster's first edition. Webster's first edition unicorn. Webster's first edition unicorn. This is from 1828. Just so that we're all clear, is an animal with one horn. The monoceros. Name is often often applied to the rhinoceros. This was in 1828. This could very well have been before the whole mud flood reset. So they were not talking about... There's nothing in this thing about a horse with a horn growing out of its head. I already said the horse with a horn growing out of its head, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's an occultic symbol. It's, it's about rebirth, virginity. Um, it's about all kinds of stuff. So this was not... There, no. Uh, Noah was not looking for a horse. <laughs> Noah was trying to figure out how to get this big beast of an animal with a horn on it into his ark. Now, he could have been worried about this because this thing could have been huge. It could have been the size of a dinosaur, for all we know. We don't know. That's speculation. That's speculation. So anyways, he's wondering how to get this thing on here, and he says, I can bring thee a unicorn, Father Noah. He heard in a voice of thunder, and turned around, and he saw the giant Og. But thou must agree to save me, too, from the flood. And of course, 
Noah said, no, I can't. You are, are a demon, not a human being. I can have no dealings with you. And then Og pretty much cried and whined. Uh, and he was worried that he would not be able to make it because the entire world was flooded up past the mountains. And, you know, it is what it is. What was the other thing I saw, too? It I, I saw it very briefly. They were talking about how... Um, when Og was on top of, of the Ark, he was staring at it with his legs. And there was another thing I said that he was on the bottom and he was walking with it because he could actually touch the he could actually touch the ground. He was walking with it, had his hands around the Ark and he was guiding it or something like that. That was oh, weird. I don't know. But anyways, uh, so he Noah's pretty much saying, no, can't do this. Uh, Noah, however, only smiled, but he grew serious again when Og brought a unicorn. It was as big as a mountain, although the giant said it was the smallest he could find. Think about that for a second. It lay down in front of the ark, and Noah saw that by action that he must save it. For, for some time he was puzzled what to do, but at last a bright idea struck him. He attached the huge beast to the ark by a rope fastened to its horn horn, thank you, so that it could swim alongside and be fed. So then Og sits there pretty much waits for the uh waits for the water to start falling, and then he jumps on its back, survives, pretty much tells Noah, if you want the unicorn to survive, you have to you have to, you know, feed me as well. So Noah gives in to it, starts feeding them both because he was afraid that Og could sink the Ark with one shot, pretty much, with his tremendous tremendous strength. Uh, and Noah pretty much says, okay, look, I'll feed you, but you have to promise me that by the end of this, you're not going to be a jerk anymore. Og says, sure, why not? So they go through the whole thing, and uh, Og helps them out. I'm sitting here just kind of skipping through all this. Uh, when they when they finally come to rest on the mountain, you know, Oak kind of helps them out. Helps, you know, where's it at? Noah comes to Oak and he he tells Oak. He says, "Look, I uh, I have to go about the world. I have to start planting flowers and seeds. You know, um, Noah. I've heard that in other stories as well that." Uh, Noah walked the earth after he got off the ark and he planted all the seeds of the world. That's what he did. Uh, good old Johnny Appleseed. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, so Og riding his big blue ox. That's it's your uh, Paul Bunyan reference. He follows <laughs> he follows Noah around. He follows Noah around, helps him do this. They do this whole... There's a sacrifice thing here. You gotta, you gotta read this. It, it's the... It's like I said, it's the giant of the flood, sacredtext.com. It is it's a Jewish fairy tale. It's crazy. It is what it is. But uh Yeah, they go through this whole thing. Apparently apparently Og shows Noah how to make fermented wine. Uh through this what is this? This this whole ritual thing is it's weird. It's a sacrifice. I will offer sacrifices, wonderful fruits. May I not do so now, but our labor, labors are over. Noah agreed. Giant brought a sheep, a lion, a pig, and a monkey. Now, this is this has nothing to do with anything. I just thought this was weird. First, he, fl- he slaughtered the sheep and the lion. When a man shall taste but a few drops of the wine, he said, he shall be as harmless as a sheep. When he takes a little more, he shall be as strong as a lion. And Og began to dance around the plant, and he killed the pig and the monkey. Said, uh, I am giving thy descendants two extra blessings. Uh, when man shall drink too much of the juice of the wine, he he then shall he become a beast like a pig. And then he still continues to drink. He shall behave foolishly like a monkey. I just thought that was interesting. That's just one of those random-ass little things. It's like, what? So, you know, of course... It goes on, Og drinks way too much. After And many years afterwards, when he was a servant to the patriarch Abraham, this is weird, the latter scolded him until he became so frightened that he dropped a tooth. Apparently, Og dropped one of his teeth, and Abraham made an ivory chair for himself from the tooth. Now, I don't know anything about that. I have not looked that up, but if it's a thing, then hey, it's a thing. 
Afterwards, Og became king of king of Bashan, and he forgot the compact he made with Noah. And instead of helping the Israelites to obtain Canaan, he opposed them. So there you go. And then he does this whole thing where he says, "I will kill them all with one blow." And I'm trying to find this. I, I really am because I, I I had it. I had it. I don't know where it is. Uh. I had it, because that was one of the, no, what? Not what I want. It's King Og. Um... I know I had it too. I had it, and I don't know where it went. And it sucks so bad because it was it was it tells you um, exactly how big King Og is. It really puts it in perspective, and it's in the book. And it's like, wow, you know. So it's one of those things where you just like. <sighs> And I'm trying to find it, and I'm very sorry. I don't know where it is. Man, this sucks. I don't know where it is. But it was the tale where King Og... It was a tale where King Og goes out and... I think this might be it. I don't know. It's a tale where King Og goes out, and they're they're about ready to fight each other in this valley. And um, what he says is, I'm not even looking at the right thing. I'm not even looking at the right thing. No, there's that. But what happens is Og they're out there, they're they're about ready to attack King Og and all these all of his people. King Og comes out to meet them. And um King Og's looking at, at all of uh, Moses' men, and he's basically saying, "You know, look at this. Look, look how, uh, look how many of them there are. For there's, you know, basically all these people are out there. There's what does he say? It's like three parses of uh, of the Israelites." Freaking hell, man. It's just so weird that it's not in here, that it's not, like, popping up immediately. Because every time I, I write in Moses defeating King Og... It, it's coming up with the same story that we did before. It's not... I mean, is it in Genesis? Is, is it up in there? Maybe it's in there? I don't know. But anyways, he's talking about... Uh, he's talking about how he's... How he sees the entire nation of Israel and, and how... Uh, how they are like three parsas. Now, a parsa turns out to be like a mile long. And it's like he says something like uh, I, 
I will I will wipe them all out in one shot. I wish I could find this. I really wish I could find this. Do not fear him. This is where it is, though. King of Shana will swear him. Man, I wish I could find this. Just because it, it... When you read it, it just it puts it the whole thing in perspective. It really does. I can't find it. I don't know where it is. That sucks. I feel so bad, too, because it really... It really just, uh... It really would have been something good. <laughs> and it's not, and I can't do it. I can't do it. It's so bad. Let's look here. See what it does. If I can't find it, I can't find it. I'll just keep going on with the story. So anyways, um... What the hell, man? Why why is this now suddenly becoming so hard for me to do? Yeah, it's just ridiculous. So anyways, it goes on about him saying, look, they're, you know, three parses long or whatever. I don't even remember if that was the exact word they used either. But, um, so they go out and he says, I will smite the entire thing with one shot. Um, so he goes over to a, he goes over to a mountain and and picks up the top of this mountain, uh, which is three parses wide, and he and he uh, he throws it, or he he's he's about ready to throw it at him. And what happens was is that the angels come down, crack this thing in half. There's other stories about how. Uh, the mountain that he picked up was full of full of ants and grasshoppers or something, and it just happens to crack and falls on his head and uh, breaks through or you know breaks in half, falls on his shoulders. He falls down, and then Moses comes up and hits his heel, and he dies. Now I wish I could find this passage, but I can't find it to save my life. <sighs> This sucks. I hate this so bad. Uh, there was the one that I couldn't find, and I said, "Well, I'll find it." I like, "Oh, it'll be okay." But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But that was a thing. That was you know that was like, oh wow, you know that's that's a deal. You know that's that tells you just how big this thing is, and it's not like it's. You know, it's not like it was just a, it was a passing thing. It was, you know, it actually says it there that he was such and such big and, you know, he was wanting to kill the Israelites in one shot with the top of this mountain. So, I can't find it. This is so dumb. This is so ridiculous. I can't find it. I don't know where it is. I, I can't believe. I found it so easily the other day, and I should have wrote it down, but I, I didn't write it down. It could be in my phone. It could very well be in my phone still. I don't know, because I don't get rid of my... Uh, I don't get rid of my search history very well. So there's your parsa. No. Nope. Darn. <laughs> okay. 
So anyways, we, we'll, we'll stop this, because this is getting stupid. So anyways... I'm still looking for some reason. I don't even know why. See, his number's 2133. Is that it? Is that it? Wait, 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 wait. This might be it, because it does sound familiar. I'll get this for you guys. Let's wait. I know, I know, this is all boring. And, again, you don't have to listen to anything I say, because it all sounds like nonsense half the time. But it was in here. I know for a fact it was in here. And I am... It's just amazing how... Uh, how I can't find it now. It's just absolutely amazing. But anyways, that was a thing. That was a, that was a thing where... You know... He was talking about... Smiting them with one big shot. You know... And it's like... Well... Is that even <laughs> is that even possible? You know, I can't believe I can't find this. This is stupid. I'm looking right now uh, at the at. Yeah, I'm looking right now at places where he was in the Bible. Because I'm still looking for whatever stupid reason. Because I want to get it right, you know. I, I want to get it right. I don't want to just... I don't want to just uh, randomly throw this stuff out there. That was another thing, too, that they were talking about... Um, they were talking about Moses. There was another story that I heard about Moses that... Genesis 3 in the Targum version. And Og came, who had been spared from the giants that died in the deluge and had ridden protected on top of the ark. There you go. And sustained by food with Noah. This is the Targum version. This is like a, it's almost like a separate version. Uh, that's being spared through high righteousness. The inhabitants of the, but the, that the inhabitants of the world, this is interesting that I found this right whenever I was thinking about it, that the inhabitants of the world might see the power of the Lord and say, were there not giants who in the first times rebelled against the Lord of the world and perished from the earth? Now, again, that goes to what I was saying before, is, is why would they hide this? You know, why would you, uh, because it seems like, especially when you look at recently, um, They've gone out of their way to make it seem like giants are just a fairy tale. Like they're nothing. Like, you know, we I've seen so many newspaper articles from the eighteen hundreds, from the late eighteen hundreds, where they're talking about finding these big huge bones of guys. And where are they at? You know, we're finding these things but we're not talking about them. Are you kidding me with this? So anyways, yeah, that's that's in there. It's it's a thing, you know that that they could very well be hiding these things from us, because it's it's like that said, you know, Noah tried to keep them there so that he could, so that we would be shown that there were giants, that that you know, it was a uh, it was a thing, it was absolutely a thing, so that we would understand that there is a supernatural. There is a supernatural part of this whole thing. And, uh, so that we would know that, you know, it's, it's not just this, it's not just, it's not just this physical thing. There's a, there's, a, there's this really deep spiritual, you know, 
part of, of our existence that we don't know about, that we have, we've kind of been hidden, that's kind of been hidden from us. So it's like, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to look one more time. Deuteronomy 3, why not? If it's not in here, you, you, you've got it. And it's just not there. I don't know why it's not there. It's just not there. But I know I read it. I know I read it. Because I read it, and I was right in front of Angie when I read it, and we looked right at it, and I was like, you know, this is this is what it is. Uh, he, It says that he picked up a rock that was three parses wide, you know, and then he said that he was going to, he was going to strike down he was going to strike down the Israelites in one shot. And it was like, when you, when you read just how big a parse is, and like I said, when you read how big this thing is, a Hebrew parsa is one mile. Now, of course, this says that uh, it's, it, it's a shared word. It's a shared word. A, a parsa is the same as a, what was it, a mill? Is that what it was? A mile? It, it's a shared word, so it, it could be a mile. It could be its own thing. But, you know, it's... it's it is what it is. Yeah, I can't find it. That's crazy. Yeah, it was in there, though. I know I saw it. I'm so sorry. I know I saw it. So anyways, you got to trust me on it. It's, it's somewhere out there. But that... There's several different things that I've heard about that. Is that... He uh, he had he had grabbed this big chunk of the mountain up and and held it over his head and was about ready to throw it and the angels came down and, and smote it and it cracked in half fell on his shoulders and that was when he fell over when he fell over uh, Moses and his men came over and struck his heel with a stick. I've heard several different things about this. Um, I heard that. When, when he held this thing above his head, that it cracked. Like I said, because of uh, because of ants and grasshoppers inside of this rock, and it cracked. I've heard a story of when it fell. Apparently, it, it messed his teeth up or something, and his teeth became embedded in the rock, and he couldn't get it, and it fell over on him, and all this stuff, and. I um I even heard one thing that Moses himself was what was it 10 10 cubits high uh and had a sword had a sword <laughs> that was had a sword that was as big as he was and he used the sword to to kill Og, Oog, Og, <laughs> Oog, <laughs> Og. So it's like, wait a minute. Moses had a sword that was ten cubits long, and that's what he used to cut the. We we figured it had to have been Achilles tendon. You know, you cut the Achilles tendon of of a giant. You know, he's he's gonna die. He's gonna go down. So it was like, you know, wow, man. I mean, is that? Is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember where that came from. It was just something that I heard. You know, I mean, I hear, I hear so many things in passing, and I don't get to write everything down. You know, because usually I'm like in shock of something that I heard before that. But um, but yeah, I mean, it it just 
it boggles your mind. It absolutely does bog your mind just how big these things were. I just really. But they talk about these things, and again, we don't we don't really put it in you know, we don't really put it together, you know, as you know, oh hey, you know, this guy was probably only this guy was probably a giant in terms of the fact that everybody was smaller than than we are now, you know, and all this stuff. And I don't believe that anymore. I used to believe that. I used to think that, you know, human beings used to be tiny and we used to grow up. You know, I, back in the day, we used to be about, we all used to be about five foot nothing. And, you know, we've slowly become six feet tall. I don't believe that anymore. I don't, I, there's a part of me that never believed it because when you go look at it, when you go look at a, a house from the the 1800s, even into the early 1900s, you go look at those houses and they're, they're not exactly small houses. There, there was a reason that, uh, they made the ceilings on some of those places 10 feet tall. Now, you know, granted, I mean, that's kind of like the standard for us anymore. You know, you get a door frame that's about seven feet tall and you get a ceiling that's about 10 feet tall. But I've been in houses where the door frame is like eight, nine feet tall. And you're like, why would you waste that many, that much resources on a door? You know, especially if they tell us back in the day that resources were so, so finite that, you know, they, it took a craftsman a whole day to be able to make a door by himself. That was so intricate with all the designs and shit. Okay. So he was making a, he was making a 10 foot tall door. And somebody could afford that. They probably could. I get it. It's possible. Anything's possible. But I don't. They they love to tell us that oh everybody was five feet tall back in the day. You know that we were all tiny little people. That we we've only just recently sprouted up into six feet tall monsters. You know I'm I'm five eleven. So you know whenever I hear that. Whenever I look around, I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, everybody's five feet tall. Yeah, whatever. That doesn't mean that we're we're growing. It just, maybe it means a lot of us are shrinking. I, uh, I put the theory out there in the last video. What if, uh, what if we are de-evolving down to chimps? Chimps are only about two, three feet high. We could be de-evolving. We could be getting smaller, not bigger. I don't know. It's possible. I think it's possible. But when you put all this stuff in perspective, when you put the the King Og stuff, when you put uh, uh, when you when you listen to the scriptures, even though I couldn't find it scripture to save my life, but <laughs> when you put it in perspective of all that, and it's like, and it's like these guys were big. These guys were bigger than big. You're talking about a guy that could lift up a, a three mile long rock and and use it, say that he's gonna take the whole thing and just crush the Israelites in one shot. That uh you know. It's amazing. It's a C right here, Deuteronomy. What? Okay, so there's another thing I found too. <laughs> this other interesting little thing I found too. So this is this is a uh, Shabbat.org. I don't know what this is. It's it's a Jewish website. Um, but this is called the Memoirs of of Og, uh, the Not So Gentle Giants, uh, by Shaul Wolf. Uh, it's done in the first person. I, uh, I, Og, King of Bashan, have undertaken to commit my life experiences to writing in an attempt to assure my legacy does not get lost and that my place in history is not forgotten. Thank you very much, because we need to know about this guy. We really do. So it goes on, it talks in the first person, and it's it's kind of it's kind of silly. I mean, it is. I get it. It's for kids, because they got a little, they got a little, uh, they got a little picture here of, of this guy in this armor, and he's, he's tall, he's giant. It's funny. But he go down, and he's talking about uh, where is it at? 
Torah is quite brief in its depiction of me. Again, it's it's not in first person. Uh, I was quite large even for a young age. People tell me tell me that my crib had to be made from iron because a wooden crib would break every time I lay down in it. In those days, we used to make beds about a third longer than the person sleeping in them. So a bed of nine cubits long, I must have measured in about six cubits tall, a respective three meters. This is pretty cool. This is not bad. I, I haven't read this. I mean, I found it, and I was like, what is this? Like, I did this, or I did that, or I came from this, and I'm like... Are you trying to give this? Are you trying to give this giant a personality? I mean, seriously, I don't want a, this giant to have a personality. I just need to know what this guy was. Uh, let's see what else here. Other than my entire family, along with the rest of humanity, was wiped out by the flood. I managed to save myself and have my life spared. No and I cut a little deal. I promised Noah that I'd I'd be his slave for life, and he agreed to let me hitch a ride on the ark. I added a little plank of wood onto the back of his boat, and I held on throughout the flood. So, here's the, I mean, this is, again, it's its one of those things where you have, you have four different stories of this character surviving this flood somehow. And we know that this flood is a thing that, that everybody experienced. So, when you kind of connect those pieces... And you can kind of, you can kind of see that these people were trying to say that this guy was, this guy was actually a thing, you know, that this actually happened. This is how he got through. And it's like, you know, and I mean, it, again, if you, if you believe this, if you put this, if you put this in your heart as being truth, and it says that he was the last of the giants, then you have to. You have to open yourself up to it, you know. I mean, you don't have to. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't know why I'm saying. If you want to believe it, then you kind of have to open yourself up to it, you know. If you don't, again, it doesn't. It sh- it doesn't. All the stuff I talk about, you know, the 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 flat Earth and the you know the conspiracy theories and and this all of this, it doesn't change your belief in God or your your faith in Jesus Christ. For me, it just, it adds that element of, it's almost like confirmation. Like, you know, this is, this is how it was. This is where we're going. This is, you know, this is where it is. So anyways, it comes down here. He's talking about, he's talking about being with Abraham. Uh... Next time I cross paths with Abraham, next time I cross paths with Abraham at a uh, was at a party he threw celebrating his son Isaac's growing up. Uh, <laughs> see, it's just all done in first person. It's just so weird. Let me tell you something. Isaac was a puniest little thing I that I have ever seen. I mean, seriously, I could have crushed him with my little pinky. <laughs> this is nuts. But then it goes into Deuteronomy. And Moses took me on. It was a humiliating defeat. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy's account was even worse. There was not a town that we did not make, that we did not take from them. 60 cities. Uh, all the cities were, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I keep going down. Where's that? <sighs> Camp of the Jews. Here we go. The camp of the Jews was three parsa by three parsa. This is actually, this says 13 kilometers by 13 kilometers, which a kilometer is no small feat either. Um, Dude, what's a... Wow. Okay, so a kilometer is 0.62 of a mile, so this is actually bigger than I said. Because I was just giving it a benefit of the doubt of being a mile. We're talking about kilometers? Holy crap. So, let's do the math. Why not? Let's just say 0.62 times 13. Woo, doggy. 
That's 8.06 miles, kids. Wow. So we're we're saying the Camp of the Jews was 8 miles. I knew of a mountain that was around the same size. I would pick up the mountain and drop it on the Jews. Simple, right? This this story is so great. You guys need to go check this out. Uh, with a mountain perched on my head, ready to drop on the Jews, trillions of tiny little ants came and ate away at the bottom of it, making a huge hole all the way through. And the rest of the mountain slipped down over my shoulders, leaving my head sticking out of the top. Well, I, I again, I've heard that it was cracked and it fell on his shoulders. And he fell... As I was trying to pull the mountain off of my head, my teeth miraculously grew and locked the mountain into place. That's crazy. It doesn't, it, at this point, uh, it was pretty much game over. Uh, Moses himself came along with a battle axe and started hacking away my ankles, which was the highest he could reach even, even while jumping. Dude. I mean, come on, man. Put that in perspective, will you? Put that in perspective. That's just crazy. <sighs> but I'm out there, man. That's where I am. I'm out there. I'm, 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 I'm out there on. Uh, this is like the the fringiest of the fringe, <laughs> the mile high, mile high giants that are ripping off eight mile, eight mile bits of of mountain, and you know. <sighs> Wow. There's other stuff I want to talk about too, but I need to stop because it's just getting nuts. It's just getting nuts. You know, I mean, just, just the bigger and bigger it goes, literally the bigger and bigger it goes, the more you just, your mind starts cracking. And it's like, I can see I can imagine it going home on the way home. I'm imagining watch w- seeing guys out in the distance cuz you know you live in Indiana it's all flat. So you can you can see way 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 out there. I I imagine it in my head big huge giants walking mile high monsters that you can see from 3 4 miles away just walking like it was nothing. And I was hearing stories about, I think it's from the Book of Giants. I haven't, like I said, I haven't got there yet. But uh, they were talking about how these guys were, uh, they were talking about how these guys were, every step they took was, was just death and destruction. You know, it's just, it just, one thing after another and it's like phew. so what does it all mean i mean what is it truly what does it all mean where do we go from here what do we uh how do we put all this together how do we really put all this together well jesus says that you will know the uh you will know the coming of man because the days, I think it says, as in the days of Noah, so shall be the, the coming of man. Now, one of the other ways I've I've gone is uh, Bible prophecy because our world's pretty messed up. We all know this. It's, it's getting pretty bad. But uh, they're talking about the world becoming the way it was whenever it was in the days of Noah, right before the flood. So, of course, you know, you've got the lawlessness, you've got the ruthlessness, you've got the people killing each other, and the, the sex and the violence, and yada, yada, yada. And then you have to talk about the giants. You You have to talk about the giants. Uh, you have to talk about all the legends and all the tales of of the giants hiding underground. Not just not just Christian. We're we're talking about a whole bunch of different faiths that talk about all these being buried underground. Even the Titans, the Greeks, they were buried underground. They're down there. You don't have to believe it. I kinda do. <laughs> I kinda I, I'm I'm there, you know. Like I said, I'm there. I'm I'm at that point. Uh, there was somebody else I was listening to saying that uh, I can't 
can't remember the exact words, but they were talking about the uh, the judgment of the of the Nephilim or something coming back onto the earth, you know, like up onto the earth, like literally word for word, they're coming back up onto the earth. So it's a thing, man. Now, does that mean that you're going to wake up tomorrow and, and there's going to be like this mile high giant walking through your neighborhood? I don't know. I don't know. Anything's possible. I don't know if it's probable. It's possible. Somehow I got I got onto the uh, the strange sounds that have been happening in the skies. You know the grinding sounds, the the screaming sounds. The you know that sounds like there's some kind of rabid monster out there. You know, and there's these uh, these long grinding sounds. It sounds like it's an airplane, and you know all this other kind of stuff, and we know that well the the guy that was that was doing them was saying that you know when you hear a bell you're not hearing the uh you're not hearing the pendulum making the sound you're hearing the bell the bell is making a sound if you get a hollow object if you hit the inside of a hollow object you're going to it's going to reverberate that sound so It could very well be coming from the planets. Plane. Ugh, I did it again. It could very well be coming from the ground. That the sounds are coming from underneath. Now we know that we know that the government is making tunnels. We we know this. It, it's uh, if you don't know anything about that, go look that stuff up. But we know that they're down there making tunnels. We know that there's been guys that have driven down into these tunnels, you know, and they go on for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And uh, we know something's going on under there. We don't know what. They're not going to tell us. But when you hear about you hear about them making tunnels, you hear about how giants could very probably be a real thing, and that they are underneath the ground, and that this whole place is evil. The whole place is evil. There's nothing other than what's in us. There's nothing good on this world. <laughs> there really isn't. It's it's all bad. <sighs> Maybe that's what they're doing. I don't know. I don't know. It could be possible. So I was listening to the sound, and I hate listening to those sounds. You know, whenever somebody's recording the sounds that are coming out of the sky, I hate those, man, because some of them are just so creepy as shit. But when I listen to them, with the idea of not only there being something underneath the ground, but, you know, of digging tunnels and things like that, I was like, okay, that I can hear. That sounds like it could be an earth borer. It, it does. Whenever you hear something that sounds like a, sounds like a, a jet or, you know, an airplane or something that's just constant, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, that could be an earth borer. That really could. But the, the screams, the sounds, the beatings, the, uh, the, 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 what was it? The trumpet. Some sometimes you hear like these trumpet sounds. You're talking about otherworldly things. You're talking about things that you have no idea what they are, what they do, what they are, what kind of sounds they make. You, you, from that perspective, it could very well be. It could very well be anything that's coming up underneath that nose is running again. And it makes you think. It really does. It makes you think. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. I think I'm there, like I said. <laughs> I think I'm there because I'm just at that point where it's like, what else? You know, what else? So you don't have to, you don't have to believe any of it. Uh, 
it either it either strengthens you or it doesn't. Uh, it strengthened me to the point to where I can I can look at it and I can talk about it and I can say, well, this is this and that's that. I feel a sneeze coming on. Hold on. Try not to do that on camera so you guys get to see me blowing my nose. I look crazy. But, uh, I don't know, man. It, it just, it helps me figure it out. And I think it, it, it gives me that ability to be able to talk about it to people, you know, to be able to say, look, you don't have to believe it. I, I really, I can't, I can't force you to believe it. I can tell you about these things. And if you choose to take that and do with it what you will, then you can do that. And like I said, I, for me personally, it just strengthens me. And I'm sure there's, there's gotta be somebody else out there. That's just like me that, that is trying to figure out everything. And if they hear just one little tiny thing, then they can be like, Oh, Oh, and then, you know, because, man, my life has turned around. My, my whole life has changed. I think it's changed for the better. I really do. I feel I feel happier with life. I, I feel uh, I feel more content. I don't have to worry about anything anymore. Um, I feel strengthened. <laughs> I really do. I feel like I can walk. I can walk through life now a little bit better than I was and know that, you know, I can keep on this path and be pretty happy. And it's it's these everyday epiphanies that just blow my mind and I'm I'm happy for it. I really am happy for it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I I appreciate every day that you give me something new. Uh but if it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't, then psh, hey. Go on. Live your life. It's okay. I don't think you need it. I really don't. But if it helped you at all, then hey, you know, there you go. Uh, but like I said, go look this stuff up, man. It's out there. It's all out there. It's. I wish I could have found that, that Bible verse. I really do, but I couldn't. I don't know where it is. It was there. We read it. I remember reading it. And I'm pretty sure it's in Deuteronomy, but I cannot find it to save my life. So it is what it is. <sighs> so I don't know. But it's, I thought I saw it, but I guess not. But it's just all these little things that as I listen, as I listen to the book, as I go, and as I hear different things, and you know, it's, it's like I said, it's just that it's the little things in between that as you're listening to it or as you're reading it and it's just like you know why would he say that this was that and then we never look into it you know we never understand you know well you're talking about these great and mighty men you know but it's like a, it's like a blip it's a blip on the map it's this it's all this supernatural stuff that we take for granted that we don't really look into. We don't really think about. There's not many people that preach this stuff either. Um, and I think there's a reason for that because it, it if you if you trust in the supernatural, I think that you can. I think that it opens your it it opens your spirituality. It opens your uh, it opens your ability to to know that there's something there. At least for me. I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, you don't have to believe it. So anyways. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about it. Other than it is what it is. I absolutely believe that. There was something really crazy that happened in this world that uh, that we're missing out on a lot of it. Nobody's telling us. 
and there's a lot of people that are going out of their way to hide it. That should tell you something right there. If somebody's going out of their way to hide something, you should probably go find out why. And I think that's why. I really do. So anyways, I'm going to stop there. I tried not to make this really long, but unfortunately I think this is another two-hour monster. Oh, well. Anyways, thank you guys for coming around and watching. Um, like I said, look into it. If you made it this far, go look into this stuff. Man, it's crazy. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And then you you start looking at the world differently. You you start you start listening to or not listening so much as you start looking at things in terms of the hugeness of the world. And it's uh you you start understanding that you know it was it was put here for a reason and it's a beautiful place and it, it truly is amazing the things that are out there that that we the things that we can't see and the things that we can see and you know it's just it's so it's so sad that we've we've had that sight taken away from us uh we've had this information taken away from us so yeah, go look into that if you want to. If you don't, hey, you can go live your life. It shouldn't matter. You can believe whatever you want to believe. I can't judge anybody. That's that's for him to him to decide. I just know that I I think that I think that there sh there should be should be people out there that are telling this stuff. I really do. Other than that, uh, I always say like, comment, and subscribe, or don't. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not looking for. <laughs> I'm not looking for sympathy or, or money or anything like that. I'm really not. Um, I I do ask for some. Uh, I would ask for some prayers. Uh, for for this next coming month. Um because I put in my two weeks notice of my job and my new job is is unfortunately a government job and the government still shut down and I'll, I've only got one more week of work. So I'm kind of worried. I, I'm, I'm worried a little bit. I really am. So uh, this week I think I'm going to have to start hitting the uh, the job market because I don't know if this, this shutdown thing will, will, will be stopped or not. The only reason I'm taking this government thing, and I know people are going to be like, oh, you work for the government. You should work for the government. Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't. But, man, they're paying top dollar. And it's not about... It's not about uh, being greedy and trying to get that money. It's just about surviving. You know, I mean, we... This job I was at, it just didn't pay the bills. And we're talking about moving in October, and... We need to start saving up cash. You know, it is what it is. So, take that as you will. Just ask you kind of pray for us. I pray every day. Hopefully, we'll get it sorted out. We get a, we can work it. Like I said, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for a handout. I'm just a, uh, just hoping that we can get through it. Anyways, thank you guys again. Uh, until whenever, I wish you all well in all your future endeavors, and I hope that the world lasts for you. <laughs> God bless you all. Take care. Save often. <laughs> Watch out for giants. And, uh, yeah. It, it, the world is, is definitely uh, it's a crazier place than you know. It really is. All right. See you guys later.